Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, let's start. Okay, the first question for today then, uh, it is, you, you can see my screen clearly, correct? Yes, great. Uh, a patient presented to your clinic complaining that he doesn't like the look of his old amalgam fillings and he wants to replace them all with uh, tooth colored fillings due to aesthetic reasons. Uh, this is again a very common question and one question will definitely be asked in your exam. Understand? Regarding amalgam. Because ADC loves amalgam and because they have mentioned uh, in this newsletter also, you know, they took an effort actually because so many people must be asking them, why do you have amalgam in your exam? Why? So they have made that question and they have answered that. Because uh, in that part of the world, basically Australia, still some people are using amalgam and a lot of old people have amalgam. So they have placed amalgam in their question exam scenario, both in written and practical, so that when a new graduate goes and gives their exam, he's well experienced how to deal with amalgam. So 100% one or two amalgam questions would be asked. One of the questions would be on the cavity preparations of the amalgam, its retention features, its, uh, its resistance features, the depth of the cavity, fracture of the amalgam. And one question would be, the patient is no longer happy and uh, his, his uh, partner or some natural, uh, you know, uh, naturopathic has told him that amalgam has a lot of mercury, so might as well go and get replaced all of them. And he has come to you saying that I have like multiple amalgam fillings and you just replace all of them. Now, how would you deal with this patient? So this question is based on that similar scenario. Okay. So yeah. Uh, going back to the question, you explain to the patient that it's better to retain the old amalgam filling since it's still sound. But despite your information to him of the adverse effects of removing all the amalgam, he's still insisting on replacing it. How do you deal with it? See, as a patient, he has a right to get whatever kind of filling that he would like. And if he says replace, then eventually you will have to do so. But then you also have to provide him with a logical explanation. You understand? So currently, uh, he's mentioning himself why he wants to replace. It's due to aesthetic reasons. He's not saying that he wants them removed because of mercury toxicity. This is very important. So when he says he wants to change due to aesthetic reasons, uh, then what will you do? You have to replace the fillings in the anterior portion of the teeth. Getting my point? Clear? So now let's come to the sub questions. What is the risk of removing old amalgam? So according to AFRA guidelines, uh, see, I know in India and in Middle East and other parts of the world, normally when we remove amalgam, we don't follow a proper protocol. Ideally, removing the amalgam requires strong PPEs along with big masks, uh, a, a strong suctioning pressure so that the vapor is not distributed anywhere. If you Google a picture and see how amalgam is removed, you will be shocked to see what all they wear just to remove an amalgam. So because there is risk when the vapor is high of amalgam, because you'll breathe in it, it will get deposited here and there in your clinic, causing toxicity. Also, a lot of mercury would be released when you are removing the amalgam. So Australia takes it very seriously and it should be. Uh, so what is the risk of removing amalgam? First option, generation of amalgam vapor. That is true. Risk of teeth becoming non-vital? Not necessarily. Like this is very rare, but can it happen? It can happen. Tooth fracture? Well, if the amalgam was a really deep restoration and you will weaken the tooth structure, it can happen. Mercury toxicity, yes, it can happen. All of the above, that is also true. But risk of teeth becoming non-vital is very, very rare. Tooth fracture is, again, very low on priority. So even though B, C, D, and E options are correct, they are not 100% correct for all the cases. But what is 100% correct for all the cases is generation of amalgam vapor. Hence, we go with the option of A and not with the option of E. 
I hope this is clear and understood. Correct? Any questions on this? I've just opened the chat video. Clear. Great. Lisa, what do you want me to repeat? Amalgam thickness is 1 to 1 1.5 mm. Yeah. The last sentence is that although the options B, C, D, and E are correct, but they are not correct all the time. So the option A becomes the correct answer. That is my last sentence. Any other question? Robert, the minimum thickness is 1 to 1.5 mm, not the maximum thickness. Maximum it can go more. So I move on to the next sub question. You took radiographs to check on teeth filling condition, which restored tooth shows secondary caries in this radiographical view. So they have presented with you an IOPA. Now you see all this IOPAs that we have put, of course, the ADC has not given us. These are very close to the IOPAs that are asked in the exam. Because in the exam, they have their own IOPAs, you understand? But this gives you a fair idea as to what it is going to look in the exam. So uh, we have taken a bite wing. This is a bite wing. And which restored tooth shows secondary caries, okay? Restored tooth. So here we see like the upper premolars and the molar is restored, but I can't see caries there. Though I see a bit of overhang on the upper premolar. In the lower, I see restoration on two molars and one premolar. And the middle molar, like basically this area, I see there is secondary caries. So my answer should become tooth number 36. Straight, simple, forward question. The patient comes in claiming that his holistic doctor told him that he has an allergy to mercury and needs only white filling. Your best response is, so see, that's what I was explaining. You know, there are naturopaths, there are holistic doctors. They will all go against mercury. They will present their own scientific evidence, you know, literature. So in that scenario, you should never start convincing the patient, even in the exam or in your clinical practice. You should present them with facts. You should give your literature. You should give them your evidence-based studies stating that amalgam is like 150-year-old material. It's been used in dentistry, you know. So you have to present facts and then you have to leave the decision on the patient. You cannot refuse if the patient keeps on insisting. But you have to give him definite information in favor of the right thing. So your best response is option one. There is no such thing as mercury allergy. Plus there is no mercury in amalgam fillings. Well, that is the wrong option. Because mercury allergy may or may not be there. But no mercury in amalgam fillings? <laughs> not possible, right? You might have mercury allergy, but that is very rare. Plus, there is no mercury in amalgam fillings. Again, wrong option. There is no such thing as mercury allergy. Plus, with proper isolation technique, your exposure will be minimal. Now, now in this option, the second part of the sentence is correct. That is, proper isolation technique, your exposure will be minimal. That is true. But there is no such thing as mercury allergy. No. There might be people having allergy. There are people having allergy for all sorts of things. Even in one person in this 7 billion world of people has, that means there is mercury allergy, right? So you cannot say there is no such thing. Now, if this option would have been the D option, that is you might have mercury allergy, but there is that is very rare. Plus, with proper isolation and technique, your exposure would be minimal. This becomes a very right kind of information to the patient. That you can have allergy. We never know. But uh, if we isolate properly, then we'll make sure that the mercury touching to your skin and the oral cavity is minimal. So this becomes the right answer. Again, I'm starting the chat box option. Any question regarding to this? Should I proceed? Okay, let's go ahead. Question four. The patient insists on replacing uh, all the amalgams due to aesthetic complaints, even after you have explained all the risks. How would you manage this? Like I said, 
we can inform the patient but the, it's patient's tooth it's patient's right they can do whatever they want at it but we have given them all the information and that is what you are going to sign them in the written consent that the patient has been given all the information regarding amalgam the patient has been mentioned that uh, you know amalgam is not toxic and that it is not necessary to remove but the patient still insist on removing them after understanding all the consequences which can be fracture of the tooth making the tooth non vital crack in the tooth blah 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 then the patient signs it then you go ahead and remove and you put the composite filling so you just look came on so uh yeah now it's now it's mute right anybody who is not mute just please mute yourself so that it's not a disturbance uh, uh so accept the patient's request option a is correct but it does not mention that you take a signature for a consent waiver is a consent okay waiver is another term for a consent document and it always has to be a written one it's for your own safety refer the patient to another practitioner for a second opinion why for aesthetic reasons the patient wants to change na so he comes to you he comes to other practitioner his concern is i don't want silver fillings in my front teeth fair enough accept the patient's request after he signs for a favor is the right option refuse to do the treatment why would you refuse to do the treatment the patient is not asking something which is illegal uh changing a filling to some other filling is not illegal it's not against the law it's not against the ethics so you cannot refuse to do the treatment understood i'm again owning the chat option any question if not i'll proceed okay uh what is not true about caries associated with restorations and sealants now see look at this question this is not related to this scenario this is a basic dental mcq question even if the scenario was not mentioned i could have just asked you this question as a dental question understood what is not true about caries associated with restoration and sealants meaning what is wrong in the following options meaning there will be only one wrong option and rest will be right options so how we are going to read the option is what is right because then easily we can spot what is wrong you understand if we train our brain to see what is wrong in the following options it is too much of thinking too much of analysis which will consume lot of time so we will start saying what is right because that is very easy to understand because we have been learning properties of materials properties of this and this ideal characteristic which are all correct understood this is the way you should approach your question so what is correct in the following options discolored margin is an indication of cars is that correct no all discoloration does not mean there is caries discoloration can be because of the color of the restoration discoloration can be because of the stains anything so luckily in this answer the first option itself is a right answer meaning that is the wrong option as per the question but let's see the other options thinking in mind that we have to see what all is right caries associated with restoration and sealants is identical to primary caries but it occurs adjacent to the margin of existing restoration is this statement correct yes it is cars is infrequent occurrence occurrence with resin composite restoration when placed in mm. position that is also correct cars is most common at proximal cervical margins again correct they have not said it is the only way they have said most common which is true cars is multifactorial again true secondary caries basically they are mentioning and it is multifactorial oral hygiene poor lot of sweets not taking proper care so b c d and e options are all true so what is that option which was not true was the option a and that becomes my answer easy to understand so we finish our first sub questions out here first uh, scenario based question rather any questions regarding this topic please ask yes robert please ask
I'm waiting for your question in the chat box. Isn't redoing amalgam restoration unethical cause we will be removing sound structure? Yeah, that's why you have uh, signed a waiver now, but it's the patient's choice, aesthetics. Aesthetics is also important. Imagine you having a silver amalgam. So, so you are an 80 year old, Robert, example. When you were 20 or 30, your silver amalgam filling was put on your central tooth. Now the times have changed. And now whenever you smile, you have a silver tooth coming in front. And now you oh. know that white restorations exist. Wouldn't you want oh. to change it? Oh. Correct. So that is why, uh, plus while removing more vapors. Yeah, that is why proper isolation technique now. Uh, please Google how, how uh, proper care has to be taken while uh, removing amalgam. You'll see a picture. Can I show you a picture on Google? I don't know if my screen would be showing you that. Yeah, I think my screen is showing you that. Wait, let me just Google up for you. Removing dental amalgam precautions. And let's go on images. Do you see this picture? You see what they are wearing? So they have covered themselves completely and this is a very high vacuum uh, device that they are using. The patient is also covered to a big and great extent and the kind of mask they are having so that they don't inhale the vapor. This is how amalgam is removed. So when you take all these proper precautions, uh, the amalgam is removed very nicely and then there is minimum exposure. Got it? So it's not unethical. Nobody says it's unethical. Nowhere it's written it's unethical. And as, as a restoration on the front tooth, if you don't remove, you're actually torturing the patient, you know. So let's go back to SBQA. Any other question apart from this? Do you know how we remove amalgam in India when you are studying as a graduate? If you have not done it properly, you just move the burr. There is no, not even a rubber dam. You know that, right? Still nothing happens to the patient. So of course, proper precautions are taken. So nothing happens if proper precautions are taken. So, okay. Now let's go to SBQ number eight. A 33-year-old patient presented at your clinic complains of sensitivity in tooth number 26. Where is 26? This is 26. With cold rings. Okay. So that means to cold temperature, there is sensitivity. There is no pain. There is sensitivity. Okay. When I say sensitivity and no pain, means what? Mostly reversible pulpitis. It occurs only when he drinks cold drinks. You took a bite wing radiograph and there is no tenderness to percussion. No tenderness to percussion investigation is already done. Meaning somebody has already tapped on the tooth. No tenderness means what? The periapical tissue is normal. Clear? What could be the cause of tooth sensitivity? Now, when you see this radiograph, you can clearly see a caries below the restoration. So if I say the option as large filling, large filling without cavity does not cause sensitivity. Periodontal bone loss, bone loss with no exposure, like the gums are nicely adhered to the tooth structure and the cementum is not exposed and not always exposure of cementum causes sensitivity, but when there is bone loss, which can be occurring in many reasons, still the patient may not have any sensitivity. Incipient caries can cause sensitivity, right? But in this option, there is a restoration. And then the caries is happening below it. So the answer becomes secondary caries. Incipient caries is right if there was no restoration. Understanding my point? Clear, simple, sweet answer? What is the diagnosis based on the symptoms? You remember what I said when I was reading the question, there is no pain. Though the caries looks very deep on the x-ray, there is no pain. There is only sensitivity. That too only on cold food. And that too only when he drinks it, not spontaneous. My answer should be reversible pulpitis. Anything else, if you choose, you're wrong. Silly mistake, gross mistake. You don't deserve to pass. Pulp is very important. 
the 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 bread and butter practice of our dentistry is pulp so you need to understand this if you are not cleared on this concept go read the endo very nicely but i hope this is clear now how will you remove the caries very good option low speed hand piece from inside to outside very tricky option this is a huh? low speed means you will think yes yes this is the right answer but inside to outside how can you reach the inside portion of caries without removing the outer tooth structure so if 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 my caries is uh, out here you know somewhere below here how can i reach this portion without removing the top so if this option would have been low speed hand piece from outside to inside that should have been my answer but the option changed it said from inside to outside so it does not become my option use high speed hand piece only not necessarily i mean i would personally go very slow but you can use a high high, a high speed hand piece nobody is stopping you but low speed hand piece is the right option but from outside to inside not from inside to outside remove everything at once no if removing all caries at once so near to the pulp if you do it you will expose the pulp because there is no pain and there is no tenderness to percussion meaning periapical tissue is healthy you you can do indirect pulp capping it shows the question is telling you the pulp is nice don't touch me do something above me to heal me getting my point so how will you remove the caries from outside to inside incrementally slowly slowly you will scoop you will see the infected portion of the dentin is removed then you will go to the arrested portion of the dentin and then you will leave it you will do ips is that clear any question on this i'm 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 seeing the chat option any question i'm waiting for any question from your side nothing then let's proceed okay so when removing caries which of the following layers of dentin are affected but not infected and therefore do not need to be removed guys what is the difference between affected and infected dentin infected dentin is soft and leathery it has bacteria inside it uh, uh, have you seen a picture of an affected and an infected dentin histology remember let's let's see how it looks like you know why do i show you all the picture so that it's imprinted in your brain let me ask you one question when i tell you the term Lionel Messi has everyone heard of him what picture comes in your mind right everyone i just said the term lionel messi guys the zoom session will end in 10 minutes but i will restart the same session so join back after 10 minutes okay come on right fast when i say lionel messi what picture comes in your mind goat really robert i i think you meant to write goal right it's not goat it's goal right <laughs> football right kritesha but i just said the term lionel messi lionel messi can be a lot of things it it can be a table it can be chair it can be any random human being i i really don't know why this pop up is coming up yeah it can be a random thing there, there can be hundreds of of people named as lionel messi but immediately the image that goes into your head is this this guy correct immediately so when i read a question and i read infected and affected dentin what picture should come in my mind infected versus affected dentin because when you start to pictureize something your answers become very very clear picture an electron microscope or i should just write histology yeah let's let's see this picture you understanding my point why i'm asking you to 
picturize things because when you start picturizing it becomes very easy to answer so affected dentine and infected dentine i think they have mentioned here the zones in a wrong way because the infected dentine should be above and the affected should be below no this is not a right picture yeah but this is nice you see this is how soft and leathery infected dentine is it will be consistence of a cottage cheese like when you scoop na it can easily come out but affected dentine will not come out it will be very hard if you have ever tried to do that you will know have you ever tried to remove the affected dentine any one of you so i should go back to some other picture there there was one very nice picture with tubules and all you know anyways so you you need to know the layers of infected and affected dentine yeah here here do you see this picture these five zones of slowly progressing lesion zone 1 is normal dentine which is the most below layer so if caries is on top my normal dentine is next to the pulp then there is subtransparent dentine which is the affected dentine then there is transparent dentine see transparent dentine is also affected dentine and the only difference between that and the turbid dentine is that bacteria are not present in the transparent dentine yet turbid dentine is the one where bacteria and their toxins are present so that layer has to be removed and the topmost layer is the infected dentine so starting from pulp there is normal then there is subtransparent then there is transparent then there is turbid and then there is infected dentine see why it is subtransparent because their tertiary dentine is formed that is why it is subtransparent i hope this is very clear for you so you can always google pictures that way you will remember the zones very clearly and it will become very easier for you to solve the question so now when i see this question my answer becomes transparent dentine because why transparent dentine does not have bacteria so you don't have to remove it sub transparent dentine also does not have bacteria but it has tertiary dentine but the affected layer of the dentine starts from the transparent i hope this is very clear okay next coming to so anyways i have mentioned everything in this explanation out here all the enrolled candidates who have solved the mock have got it while removing caries you realize that if you remove any further soft dentine pulp will be exposed what should be the management if the caries is still remaining incomplete excavation then what will be the management so basically you can't remove the entire caries because you think you'll expose the pulp why you don't want to expose the pulp the question the pulp is healthy it's just reversible pulpitis and then there is no pain so basically the pulp is healthy you don't want to expose it because in a permanent teeth if you expose the pulp you will end up doing a pulpotomy you cannot do direct pulp capping because it would be a caries exposure so you will end up doing either pulpotomy or you will end up doing a pulpectomy you understand why you want to do aggressive dentistry we live in the era of minimized minimal uh, invasive dentistry and if there is no pulpal pain and we have the procedure of itc available we should opt for that that is what the question is telling you the pulp is healthy so you don't want to expose the pulp so what will you do you will restore the tooth but you will do itc you will place calcium hydroxide understood i hope this is very clear so the option here is is pretty straightforward of doing itc dpc is not an option pulpotomy can be an option but why do you want to do it rct is an option but why why extraction why do you want to remove the tooth you know coming to the last sbq of today any question no question great you are assessing and managing caries risk in the following cases okay so there are a couple of patients who have come to you back to back and you are doing what you are managing the caries risk you want to assess this is a high caries patient or low caries patient and then what will be your approach that is what the question is asking you first patient mary age 72 presented at your clinic complaining of root surface caries developing below the margins of the existing ground restored teeth 72 year old patient 
root caries means root is exposed below the crowns you don't want to remove the crowns understood because you cannot give a crown on the root till a certain extent mary had extensive crown and bridge restorative treatment 15 years ago so it's a long standing one and no new lesions until the last 12 months means her caries risk is pretty low as in she maintained everything very nicely but since the last 12 months she was diagnosed to have an arthritis now her diet has also changed recently because she moved to a retirement village so since 12 months things have not been stable okay now she complains of dry mouth and she has arthritis arthritis means what she is taking some steroids now steroids cause dry mouth they decrease the salivary flow and they cause a host of other problems also plus they decrease the immunity as well long term steroids will decrease immunity so the moment the question said arthritis the question wants to tell you that she is on steroids but they are you know they don't want to give you a direct answer so it's like saying you know what you have arthritis the patient has diabetes uncontrolled diabetes meaning what the patient has to take insulin get my point so you have to start thinking okay so if the patient is taking steroids what all can happen what i can do what i cannot do all those things so her diet has changed recently because she moved to a retirement village okay now she complains of dry mouth you found that it took more than 60 seconds before the saliva is produced from orifice of the minor salivary gland what salivary test will help you so so the question is saying you found out that it took more than 60 seconds before the saliva is produced what this sentence is equal to it equals to unstimulated salivary flow test which is already done so what is the next thing you are going to do you are going to do the stimulated salivary flow understood so if you read the question they are all paraphrases of simple terms telling you okay this is already been done so what you will do next that the questions are tricky so the answer here is stimulated salivary flow buffering capacity of saliva is the next test the first test is unstimulated stimulated and then we see the buffering capacity of the saliva now coming a long explanation has been given the enrolled candidates can go through then i'm coming your test revealed that all types of saliva flow are reduced in this patient so you have done all tests of saliva what will be your next step so when the salivary flow is itself very less what you can do is you can prescribe the patient an artificial salivary substitute but that is for a limited time for 24 hours you cannot use salivary substitute you know so it's best to get opinion of a oral medicine specialist so i should refer the patient getting diet analysis is fair enough but that is not going to help her fluid intake analysis fair enough she says she drinks a lot of water but still the salivary flow is less what will you do go for biopsy you are a gp you cannot do biopsy for biopsy also you have to refer to the oral medicine 